Hey guys, coming at you today with a savory meal recipe that I'm very excited to have more of. A low carb, high protein, soft and pillowy ricotta gnocchi recipe. So let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thanks for joining me. My name's Alicia and I'm a chef, a mother, a wife, and I'm here to show you all the tips and tricks on making delicious and healthy snacks, meals, desserts for the entire family. So if you enjoy these recipes and videos, please consider hitting the subscribe button down there, giving the video a thumbs up, hitting the bell icon and sharing with all your friends. It all helps my channel grow and to hopefully bring you new videos every Saturday. Today, delicious soft and pillowy ricotta gnocchi. This makes my Italian heart happy to have something similar to the original. Now I haven't mentioned it in a lot of videos so I'll mention it here. When I figure out a recipe I literally look up a regular recipe. I don't go searching for keto recipes unless like literally I have to be completely stuck. After months and months and months of trying i'll sometimes research the first one i made low carb was actually edible i ate it and i felt like i had a regular gnocchi now of course i haven't had gnocchi in a long time after i did that and it came out and it was delicious i made regular gnocchis and now i don't eat gluten very often but for this recipe, I wanted to kind of compare the regular gnocchi with the one that I figured out. And the only difference was it was a little bit stiffer. It wasn't as pillowy as a regular one. So I made a little bit of alterations to the recipe and got an even softer ricotta gnocchi recipe. And it is toddler approved. I don't purposely feed my toddler gluten free like I give him regular stuff too but it's always easier if I can just give him a little bit of mine a little bit of Adam's stuff he eats a variety of things not just the keto things or low carb things so let's get on to the recipe so the original recipe was 15 ounces of ricotta I'm doing whole milk ricotta it's the lowest carb I found was two carbs for a quarter cup there are some out there that are three, four, five carbs even. So make sure you check your labels and try to get the one that has the lowest carbs. So it's 15 ounces, but you get some of the liquid out of the ricotta. That's what the paper towels are for. We got to squeeze some of the liquid out of this. Start with 15 ounces and the recipe basically said you should have about 12 ounces left after you get all the liquid out. I still counted 15 ounces of ricotta, even though we're taking some of the liquid out and getting less in the end. So I'm not sure how that exactly works. It's super low carb either way. So, okay, it's 15 ounces. So what I do, I spread it out on a paper towel. Definitely use kitchen towels or whatever you'd like. And you may need more towels. See that soaked through pretty quick. You'll probably also use something like cheesecloth would be good. I keep meaning to buy cheesecloth and I keep forgetting. It's one of those things you don't use very often, but when you do, you know, you actually really need it. It'll save you a lot of paper towels. I do this a lot for my lasagna I make because I make it using the Natural Heavens Hearts of Palm lasagna noodles. And you gotta dry those things really good. Same thing if you use like zucchini, you should really be salting and drying your zucchini out so that your lasagna is not all wet. A lot drier now. Okay, that's it for that. So this recipe came about with me needing to use up ricotta and remembering back in my kitchen days making gnocchi. A lot of my restaurants, they use potato, but I remembered that you, there was ricotta that you can use in a gnocchi recipe. And I had it and I needed to use it up. So I started experimenting. And then I had to buy more ricotta. But it's been about a month since I made myself lasagna, so I can probably make some more now. That's the thing, it's like I didn't wanna make the same recipe over and over again, so I wanted to figure out a different recipe that I could do to use up my ricotta that I have. Now for the dry ingredients. I'm gonna weigh these in grams. It's just easier to get an accurate measurement on the dry ingredients. 
So I originally did my normal ratio, which people keep asking me about ratios and stuff. And there's some that I figured out that work mostly for fluffy baked goods. When you get into crispy cookies and stuff like that, the regular ratio, this ratio doesn't work. That's why I haven't come out with like a keto flour mix. Cause I don't think there's one flour that will work for every different recipe. Fluffy recipes, you want more whey protein. Crispy, less fluffy like cookies, you want less whey protein. But I always go back to like my old recipes. Like when I first figured out the ratio of 80 grams whey protein to 30 grams coconut, I didn't realize I can use that little amount of coconut flour in order to make a baked good. I thought the coconut flour was what really kept it together, but it turns out it was the whey protein. So now that I figured that out a couple years ago, I've been minusing the coconut flour quite a bit and getting much lower carb desserts and meals. At first I tried 80 grams of whey protein. And when I tried the regular gnocchi recipe, I realized they weren't as soft. So I minused some of the ingredients in order to get a softer dough. I only ended up doing 60 grams or three quarters of a cup of whey protein. This is unflavored isolate. It has zero carbs per scoop. So makes it super low carb. And then I've recently found out that you can swap coconut flour for bamboo fiber. I haven't tried it in all my recipes, but in the couple I have tried, it has worked. I didn't want my ricotta gnocchi tasting like coconut, so I used bamboo fiber instead. So I stuck with the 30 grams of bamboo fiber which would normally be coconut flour. And I did that because bamboo fiber does give a light texture to things and less grainy than coconut flour. I'm not sure how much that is in grams. So I have a quarter cup here. I'm gonna see if that's about right. So it was 15, so, or 16. So almost a half cup. We are gonna use more bamboo fiber to dust our surface and roll these gnocchis out. Next is three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. I use a pink Himalayan sea salt, use Redmond's real salt, or I like cooking with light gray sea salt. It has less of a minerally texture, I think. And then just a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. Oh, I almost forgot one of the most important ingredients. Six grams or a half tablespoon of Anthony's xanthan gum. If you watched any of my recent videos, you know that my xanthan gums have been different in strength. I also noticed like they're very uneven in color and texture. So I'm wondering if it's just how it's processed down. Cause the xanthan gum I used to have was a lot lighter than this in color. So I'm wondering if that has something to do with it. But if you don't use Anthony's, you may need a tablespoon of xanthan gum. That's it. You want to give this a stir just so you don't get those pockets of xanthan gum in there. And that's it. The last ingredient is three egg yolks. This would probably work without just egg yolks with just regular eggs, but I was just following a regular ricotta gnocchi recipe. So, and that's what it called for. I did have sweet potatoes on hand and I remember making sweet potato gnocchi at my one job. So I actually made sweet potato gnocchi for my son and my husband and I used regular eggs in that and they were fine. I would only do one egg if you're doing whole eggs because the egg yolk is less grams than the egg white. So, but if you do try to mess with this recipe, you may want to add the dry ingredients a little bit at a time. Whoop. You don't want a really stiff dough. I saved it. Okay, that's it. Okay, so we're gonna add our three yolks to our ricotta. Mix it up. Stay in the bowl. This is a big recipe and I have cut it in half and it's worked but I did the yolks by grams and I took half of the yolks in order to do it. This makes a lot and you can freeze it and cook it from frozen. I think it's best fresh, but you can always make it, cook a batch fresh and then freeze the rest, which is what I did. And it was good the other way too. Okay, we're all mixed in. So after that, oh, the last ingredient, I almost forgot. That wasn't the last ingredient. We need an ounce of Parmesan cheese. 
Now the recipe called for freshly grated and they said about three quarters of a cup or one ounce. But when you freshly grate something, you have a lot of aeration in there. I just went by the one ounce because I never buy blocks of Parmesan because I'm too lazy to actually get it out and grate it most of the time. I just want something quick and easy, especially now being a mom. I take all the shortcuts I can with cooking dinner. Just trying to get it done and get them fed and all that jazz. So I open this. I didn't open this because used within three to five days. So <laughs> I'm gonna have to make something for uh, dinner here. So I just got freshly grated parm from the store. As you can see, it's very not uniform in shape, which is what it would be if you were grading it by hand. I'm gonna measure it out for you in cups if you do get this brand or this kind of cheese. So that's a quarter cup. So about one ounce is a quarter cup of this freshly grated Parmesan. Okay, so mix that in and then mix in your dry ingredients. Once it starts coming together like a dough, I move to my hands. When it starts to come together, I usually dump it out. You get all that off there. Work the rest in. You're not worried about developing too much gluten here because you don't have any actual gluten. That's why we have the xanthan gum in there. Just want it all worked in together. Normally you'd let regular gnocchi rest but we don't have to do that because we don't got gluten that has to relax that's it now we gotta roll it out i'm gonna wash my hands and we'll get to rolling this out your hands will be slimy with the amount of xanthan gum that's in there that's the only thing i don't like about it we need a sheet pan with parchment sprinkled with some bamboo fiber for these to land on after we cut them work a quarter at a time. Rip off a hunk. Roll it out into a long log. I never really practiced at making like the traditional gnocchi shape. At every restaurant I ever worked at, they just did the little pillows. So I'm not gonna try to attempt it today. Maybe I will attempt it, we'll see. Well, I'm also gonna get a pot of water on because I wanna show you guys how to cook these and fry them up. Now, I'm kind of a texture person, so I do like these better fried up. They will, you can put them literally right from the water into your favorite sauce that you have heating on the stove. So once you have your log, this is how we did it at all of our restaurants. We just did like that. And had little gnocchi pillows. You just put them on a floured sheet and you can freeze them right on this sheet and then you, once they're frozen, you throw them all into a Ziploc and you have gnocchi for whenever you want. Maybe I'll try one with the fork. See if it works. It was like that? I don't know. I suppose I could watch a tutorial. <laughs> I don't know. They were good, just like this but whatever shape you want to do is fine. Do another quarter of it. Water's already boiling, so I'm turning it down. I think I did it a little bit thinner than that. You want to give them kind of like a roll in the flour so they don't stick together or bamboo fiber, I should say. See, like the xanthan gum kind of gives it like a stretch. Not too much of a stretch. <laughs> that is our gluten replacement, which is why you need so much of it. Whoa. If it's sticking to your bench scraper, flour up your bench scraper. You can also do this with a knife. It's just, this is how we always did it in the restaurant. So that's how I do it. Okay, one more log. So a quarter of this recipe is four grams of net carbs. 
seven total, three fiber from the bamboo. You do kind of want them the same size, but it's not super crucial because when they're done, they float and you just pick off the ones that are floating. So if they're a little bit thicker, they're not gonna float as fast as ones that are thinner. Having them all the same size is kind of just an aesthetic thing. So I'm excited to try a bunch of different recipes now that I figured out we can make this kind of pasta with ricotta. Can't wait to see what else I can make. Okay, we'll be back to get these in water and to fry them up in a little bit of butter, garlic, and Parmesan. Cause I like some texture on my gnocchi, but if you're making like a sauce with like crunchy stuff in it, you know, stuff like that, they will be good that way. And now for the sponsor of this video, SugarSwapBakeShop.com. Sugar Swap Bake Shop is a small woman owned low carb keto and gluten free bakery opened in 2022. Right now, I am shipping my soft and fluffy, high-protein, low-carb, gluten-free bread, which is baked fresh to order, packaged and shipped by me on a weekly basis. If you are located in the states listed on the screen, which more will be added soon, go to SugarSwapBakeShop.com and click Shop to place your order today. More delicious products will be added in 2025, so stay tuned for updates. Thank you for your continued support of Keto Upgrade and Sugar Swap Bake Shop. I'm looking forward to what the future holds. Now, back to the recipe. Okay, my water's at a boil. I'm going to salt it. I also have a couple tablespoons of butter back here. I'm gonna get that on medium heat. These only take a couple of minutes to cook when they're fresh. When they're frozen, they take about four minutes. When they're not, two minutes. As soon as they're floating, they're ready to go. I'm just gonna have a place for them to land. Normally I would put them right from the boiling water into the pan, but my pan's not ready yet. So it's gonna go here and then I'll bring that pan forward. I can't get it all in the shot. Normally I just do this by weight. So this makes 21 ounces or a pound and a little extra. So if you divide it into four portions, it's five and a quarter ounces per portion. So this was one portion, 15 gnocchis. I'm not gonna make a whole portion cause it's only 11 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm gonna make half a portion, so two carbs. They're kind of floating around in there. They're almost to the surface. I turned it down so it's not boiling as much so that we can see when they're floating. They're good. Pull them out. Little pillows. That one's floating now. So I'm gonna keep the heat on. And I got my butter here, which is getting brown and bubbly. So I'm gonna put my gnocchi in. I didn't need that much butter for only a half portion, but it is what it is. I do a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, tiny bit of garlic. You can do fresh garlic, obviously. I don't have fresh garlic in the bakery because I don't use it. Coat them all and let them brown up around the edges. And then I add the Parmesan cheese. You can get nice and brown. Crispy. I like to get them brown on all sides. And sprinkle with some Parmesan. A little flippy flip. Way too much butter for how many gnocchis, but. <laughs> Smells all nutty from browning that butter up a little bit. Time to try one. So this with adding a bunch of protein and veggies, it's delicious. They're like super soft and pillowy. Mm. Delicious. They got that little bit of crunch on the outside, but they're still super soft in the middle. Mm. Little pillows change where my camera was. It's on this side. Mm. 
They are so good. I'm so excited that this was pretty easy. Now what can I do with it? Gonna be a lot of experimenting, but I'm excited. Just like soft little ricotta pillows. So good. Mm -hmm. And they were toddler approved and they're very close to the regular gnocchi. Mm. So good. So I hope you guys enjoyed this savory, low carb, high protein recipe. In one serving of this, there's 30 grams of protein. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below what you think, what recipes you're missing. I know a lot of people are missing the same recipes and I will be figuring them out eventually. Don't forget to check out my Amazon links and the blog link to the full recipe in the description box below. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, I'll be back with more videos. Bye guys. Happy cooking.